Please welcome NVIDIA founder and CEO, Jensen Huang. There are two fundamental shifts that are happening at the same time. This hasn't happened since 1964, the year after my birth. It wasn't because of my birth. But in 1964, the IBM System 360 introduced the world to the concept of IT, the IT industry as we know it, introduced the idea of general purpose computing. They described a central processing unit, a CPU, IO subsystems, multitasking, the separation of hardware and application software through a layer called the operating system. IBM described family compatibility for applications so that you could benefit by the install base of your hardware to run your software over a long period of time. They described architectural benefit across generations so that the investment that you make in software, the investments in, you make in using the software is not squandered every single time you buy new hardware. They recognized in 1964 the importance of install base, the importance of software investment, the importance of building computers that run the software. Architecture discipline, all described in 1964. I've just described today's computer industry. The same industry that the India IT industry was built from. General purpose computing as we know it has existed for 60 years until now. Those two events, the invention of the System 360, Moore's Law with Windows PC, drove what unquestionably one of the most important industries in the world. Every single industry has subsequently been built on top of it, IT. But we know now that the scaling of CPUs has reached its limit. We can't continue to ride that curve, that uh, free ride. The free ride of Moore's Law has ended. We have to now do something different. Or depreciation will end. And we now will not enjoy depreciation, but experience inflation, computing inflation. And that's exactly what's happening around the world. We no longer can afford to do nothing in software and expect that our computing experience will continue to improve, that costs will decrease, and continue to spread the benefits of IT and to benefit from solving greater and greater challenges. We had the benefit of taking a step back and asking ourselves, what are we witnessing? Why is AlexNet so effective? How far can it scale? What else can we do with this approach called deep learning? And if we were to find ways to apply deep learning to other problems, how does it affect the computer industry? And if we wanted to do that, if we believe in that future and we're excited about what deep learning can do, how would we change every single layer of the computing stack so that we could reinvent computing altogether? 12 years ago, we decided to dedicate our entire company to go pursue this vision. It is now 12 years later. You've, every single time I've come to India, I've had the benefit of talking to you about deep learning, had the benefit of talking to you about machine learning, and I think it's very, very clear now the world has completely changed. And what we're trying to do is to learn larger and smarter models. It's called the scaling law. The scaling law comes from the fact that the observation that, the empirical observation and measurements that suggests the more data you have to train a large language model with, and therefore the correspondingly large model size, you know, the more information you want to learn from, the larger the model has to be, or the larger model you would like to train, the more data you need to have. And each, one, each year, we're increasing the amount of data and amount of the model size, each by about a factor of two, which means that every single year, the computation, which is the product of those two, has to increase by a factor of four. Now, remember, there was a time when the world 
Moore's Law was two times every year and a half, or 10 times every five years, 100 times every 10 years. We are now moving technology at a rate of four times every year. Four times every year over the course of 10 years, incredible scaling. So NVIDIA in India, uh, we, have, we have a really rich ecosystem here. Uh, the first thing that you have to realize is that in order to build an AI ecosystem in any industry or in any country, you have to start first with the ecosystem of the infrastructure. And we announced that Yoda, that ETE, Tata Communications, and our other partners uh, are joining us to build fundamental computing infrastructure here in India. And in just one year's time, by the end of this year, we will have nearly 20 times more compute here in India than just a little over a year ago. That's the amount of infrastructure we're yep. So the first part of building an AI ecosystem is the AI infrastructure, just as the first part of uh, infrastructure for the internet ecosystem was building the infrastructure of, of networking. Of course, uh, the infrastructure of networking internet consists of the personal computer, cloud, and, and internet itself. Um, in the case of AI, it starts with the AI computing infrastructure. And the next part, the operating system of AI is large language models. And we've worked with partners here in India to build the Hindi large language model. And Hindi large language model, as you know, there's 25 different um, uh, formal languages here in, in India with apparently um, a, a new a dialect every, you know, 1,500 kilometers. And so, so uh, you don't have to go very far before you need to train another model. This is the hardest language model region in the world. And if anybody could do it, you can do it. And, and once India figures out how to create the Hindi large language model, you could, you could figure it out for every other country. So.